Everybody has seen photos of the attack on September 11th. These photos make it appear as if a few Arabs attacked America, and that the airplane crashes and the fires caused the buildings to collapse. However, when we take a close look at how the buildings collapsed, we can see evidence that explosives were used. For example, dust shot out of a few windows far below the collapsing area. This dust is caused by extremely high pressure, but it comes out of only a few windows. It is a couple hundred feet below the collapsing area. When we look closely at the area that is collapsing, we find dust shooting out of every window of the entire floor at the same time. The towers had a steel frame, so the only way they could collapse in such a symmetrical manner is if thousands of joints were broken simultaneously. The towers collapsed in less than 10 seconds, which is an average of 10 floors every second. Next time you see a 10-story building, imagine the entire building collapsing in one second. The only buildings that collapse this quickly are the ones destroyed with explosives. We were told that the collapse began when one floor broke and the pieces fell to the floor below it. Those pieces shattered that floor, and so on, all the way down. However, when the pieces hit the floor below, they will slow down slightly because some of their energy will be used to break the floor. Therefore, there should be a delay every time the pieces hit a floor. The towers had 110 floors, so if it took one second for each floor to be crushed, that would be 110 seconds. However, the seismic data show that the structure of the North Tower broke apart in only 8.4 seconds. The collapse started at about the 94th floor. If you were to drop a rock from the 94th floor, it would hit the ground about 8.4 seconds later. This means that the building broke apart as fast as objects fall through the air. How can debris crash through steel and concrete floors as fast as they fall through the air? There is only one explanation. Explosives were placed in those buildings before the attack. The North Tower started to collapse when explosives near the 94th floor were detonated. The explosives were timed so that the joints were shattered before the rubble contacted the floor below it. In other words, the building broke apart in only 8.4 seconds because explosives, not falling debris, broke the joints. We were told that fire caused the towers to collapse, but no large building has ever collapsed from a fire. This 32-story skyscraper in Madrid, Spain, is a good example. The fire became so intense that it spread from one floor to the next, causing the building to look like a torch. This fire was much larger than the fires at the World Trade Center. The next morning there were still a few fires in the lower floors. Everything inside the building had been burned. Some sections of the building broke. A few portions at the top of the building collapsed. However, the building remained standing and it continued to support a large construction crane at the top. By comparison, the fire in the South Tower was so small that it never spread to the other side of the tower. This inability to spread is proof that the fire was small. Furthermore, we know that firemen made it up to the fire zones of both towers because they used their handheld radios to send reports of their arrival. The fires were too small to kill firemen, so how could they be large enough to cause the South Tower to disintegrate after burning for only 56 minutes? The fire in Madrid was much more intense, and it burned all night, but it did not cause the building to collapse. Scientists created this temperature map of the rubble five days after the collapse. Obviously, the rubble would be cooler after five days, also, firemen sprayed water on the rubble during those five days.
However, one location in the rubble of Building 7 was above the melting point of aluminum, and so was one location in the rubble of the South Tower. How can a building fall down and five days later the pieces are hot enough to melt aluminum? The presidents of two different companies that were cleaning up the area said that steel had melted at the bottom of the basements in the towers and Building 7. These incredible temperatures are more evidence that explosives were used. The collapse of Building 7 provides more evidence of explosives. This was a 47-story building with a steel frame. It was not hit by an airplane. It was across the street from the towers. Late in the afternoon, this building collapsed. The government investigated the collapse of this building. After seven months of investigating, their conclusion was they have no idea why the building collapsed. A few months later, the landlord of the building, Larry Silverstein, announced on television that the fire department demolished the building. The government and the news reporters should have demanded that both Silverstein and the fire department explain what happened to Building 7, but nobody asked any questions. The collapse of Building 7 is identical to the collapse of buildings that are brought down with explosives. The explosives shatter the joints that are holding the building together, and the building falls down at free-fall speed. Dust is produced at the base of the building. There is a tremendous amount of evidence that the government created the September 11th attack. We could spend days discussing all of it. My accusation that the towers were demolished with explosives is based on scientific fact, and you cannot disagree with it. For example, pieces of a building cannot crash through steel and concrete floors as fast as they fall through the air. The fact that the frames of those towers broke apart in 10 seconds is proof that explosives broke the joints. Building 7 also collapsed in a manner that can only be explained with explosives. This is why the government says they do not know why Building 7 collapsed. Anybody who looks at this evidence and continues to insist that fires caused the buildings to collapse is simply having a difficult time facing the possibility that a government could commit such a crime. One reason it's difficult to believe that the government created the September 11th attack is because none of the major news agencies are talking about it. Some reporters refuse to talk about explosives because they are afraid to expose government crimes. Another reason for the silence is that the television, newspapers, and magazines in America and Europe are controlled by a small number of people. These people suppress evidence of the explosives, and they suppress people who come forward to support us, such as the physics professor at Brigham Young University. Instead of reporting evidence of explosives, they show us photos of Osama bin Laden. This creates anger towards Arabs, and it fools people into thinking the Arabs are responsible for the attack. The news agencies are trying to manipulate emotions, not provide serious information. Almost every reporter ignores or ridicules those of us who show evidence of explosives in the towers. Already three different television networks have criticized us. These television programs do not provide serious information to counteract our arguments. Instead, they use insults to make people laugh at us. Here is how Penn and Teller introduced Jimmy Walter. And then there's this asshole. Man, that's way too soft. Let me try that again. And then there's this asshole! My book has been available since 2002, but it was ignored by the magazines and television shows until Jimmy Walter began advertising it. This is a portion of one of his full-page newspaper ads. Here is how Penn and Teller describe my book. He wrote a book called Painful Questions, an analysis of the September 11th attack. We show you the cover because if you ever see anyone carrying it, push them down a flight of stairs. Popular Mechanics refers to us as liars. The angry and childish attacks on Jimmy Walter and me could be a sign that the criminals are frightened that we are exposing them. However, when a criminal tries to cover up his crime, 
he runs the risk of releasing more information about himself. These television shows and magazines can help us understand who is behind the September 11th attack and how they get away with these crimes. The executives of the major television networks, newspapers, and magazines are involved in these crimes. They cover up the crimes by suppressing important information and by insulting those of us who expose the crimes. The news agencies that ignore or insult us are identifying themselves as either being incompetent news agencies or as members of the criminal network. In either case, you should not purchase their newspapers, magazines, or television programs. We could use our technology to build beautiful cities for ourselves with advanced train systems, but we need better governments and better news reporters. We must also prevent the criminals from getting control of the 9-11 organizations. I will give you an example. I had been invited to speak at a meeting about September 11th in March 2004 in San Francisco. However, a week before the meeting, I was told that I was not allowed to speak. They did not explain why I could not speak. The criminals are trying to get control of the 9-11 organizations so that they can remove people like me. They fool you into thinking they are on your side. They are trying to put all the blame on President Bush or Dick Cheney. They want to suppress the evidence that lots of people from several nations are involved, such as U.S. military officials, television executives, and some Israeli and British government officials. People often respond that they cannot do anything about this corruption because they are just an ordinary person of no importance. But everybody can help make this world a better place simply by showing our books, videos, and websites to your friends. So help us educate and encourage people. Let's make this a better world.